Namaskaram, dear students. I am Eva, and today our discussion topic is Holbach's theory of model development. In our last class, we read about a theory that is Piaget theory, and this that theory was actually on uh, cognitive development of the children to adulthood, and uh, he just divided. the whole procedure of learning occur into four categories or four stages and the stages was if you can remember that the sensory motor stage then uh, pre operational stage then concrete operational stage and last one is formal operational stage and in according to piaget's theory it was that from uh, birth to uh, 15 or 18 age or till adult actually we learn day by day and with that stages we learning and then we actually can decide what is good and what is bad or our personality is grow so uh, here today we will read another theory it's called kolber's theory of moral development actually kolber uh, was a, a scientist uh, like piaget and uh, he was also psychologist and actually uh, he also worked on moral development Okay, and he uh, his uh, theory was actually extend version of Piaget's theory. Okay, and proposed he proposed moral development is a continual process that occurs through the lifespan. And he also uses the Piaget's storytelling technique that uh, tell people story involving different kind of dilemma. Okay, and he based actually different kinds of research and interviews with the group of people, and he takes different kinds of decision how people actually act in each stages. So for that reason, he actually divided the whole process into three categories, and you can also say that it three levels. First one is pre-conventional morality, then conventional morality, then post-conventional morality. and these three uh, levels actually again divided into six stages and each stage contain uh, each level contain two stages first of all uh, the pre conventional level it has two stages one is obedience and punishment and another is individualism and exchange and then uh, and then uh, the second level that is conventional level here also two stages one is interpersonal relationship and another is maintaining social order then our third stage our third level which also divided into two stages one is social contract and individual rights and last one is universal principles so that is our three levels and that are the six stages now we will discuss uh, discuss each, uh, each of the stages what happen in that levels and what happen in those stages and first of all our is pre conventional morality so what is that actually actually uh, kolber divided this pre conventional morality into as 4 to 10 and according to uh, him a person actually motivated by obedience to authority in that stage and is it is commonly associated with young children and involves a little thoughts about morality and actually this morality echo uh, again grow with just uh, check the adult behavior if we go for in that first stage of pre uh, pre conventional level that is obedience and punishment that is the earliest stage of moral development and it is we as we already say that it's common in young children and in that age children see rules as fixed and absolute okay and obeying the rules is important to avoid punishment and in that stage actually it is called obedience and punishment why because if the student don't follow the rule then they can be punished and they just understand that if i cannot uh, follow the rules then i can get any kinds of punishment so it is called that morality is motivated by punishment then our second stage individualism and exchange what happen in that stage children account individual points of view from that stage in our pre stage that was obedience and punishment where children thought that if we don't follow the rule then we can get 
uh, we can get punished okay but in uh, that individualism and exchange that is the uh, second stage of eight or ten years child uh, they just uh, at that time their individual points of view or go okay and just action based on how they serve the individual needs and children also recognize that there is one right view that uh, every individual has and in that stage the individual point of view actually started to show so that they focuses at the last of that stage that focuses on individualism and perspectives and in that stage actually they just learn the technique how they can avoid the punishment so it is called the individualism and exchange so that is our two stages of pre conventional level one is our obedience and punishment that is uh, started from 4 to 10 and in that stage what happened uh, they uh, actually stood uh, actually the child started to follow the rules why because they are afraid of punishment and in the second stage of pre conventional level they actually uh, their point of view is uh, started to begin and they focuses on individualism and perspective and they just learn how i can avoid the punishment that is your pre conventional level then if you go for example that is uh, i will keep quiet so the teacher won't get mad at me or i will keep quiet otherwise i can be punished by teacher and in stage 2 that is i will let you copy mine if you do my homework okay that is i can uh, now i will avoid the punishment first of all stage on that uh, a teacher uh, can scold me if i cannot keep quiet in the class but in stage 2 uh, just now the child is learn to avoid the punishment and uh, just he decided to help Uh, one of his classmates that if you uh, permit me to copy okay then uh, you can do the homework okay so it's a call like that i will let you copy mine if you do my homework okay that is stage one and two then our second one conventional morality it is started after pre conventional level that is s10 to 13 and in that stage people actually focuses on different kinds of social norms and customs and uh, they also value the adult role model or they think about anyone for their role model by which they follow the rules and in that is say a level there is also two stages that is interpersonal relationship and another is in uh, maintaining social order so in case of interpersonal relationships at the, this is like good boy and good girl concept that means in that stays they just know the rules and regulation how people uh, will say that they can be good boy good girl they if they good work then they are recognized as good boy and if uh, they uh, do the bad work so they recognize as bad girl okay so in that case that it relationship actual effect on their development and it also emphasizes that happy interpersonal relationship and pleasing others and they also just get understand in that stage that how to avoid rejection disaffection or disapproval from others that means now we are quite mature and now whenever we talk to others we try that other person is not hurted and we just maintain the interpersonal relationship that means in that stage the people or the children now know or learn how they have to maintain the relationship and our stage four is maintaining social order in case of that they consider society as a whole when making judgment and they focusing on different kinds of social law rules one's duty or respecting law and they also just follow the social order customs laws and they avoid the other things that can feel them guilty for example if you go for example that is in stage 3 the example will be i will buy that dress so that my friends like me that means he just consider or he just make the relationship with his friend 
that if I will buy that dress or give that dress to my friend, that he or she will like me. Okay, and stage four. Now the um, portion is like you have to maintain the lower authority. So here said that you should not cut the class because it's against the school rules, that, or you cannot bump the class. Okay as it's again the school rules so you have to present in the class for maintaining the rules so that is our two stages uh, two labels and four stages that conventional level and pre-conventional level and now that is our last one that is post-conventional model what happened there it is actually ablation to adulthood what happened there people look beyond convention to determine moral norms and appropriate social interaction just is between self-chosen principle. Now, you know the social rules and regulation, you know how to make interpersonal relationship, and now it is your turn, okay? Now you will choose your principle. Now you will choose your rights and justice. So this level also divided into two stages, that is first one is social contract and individual rights. That means in this stage, actually people's view is different and they strongly judge their views or they can uh, present their views and values and they can say about that. That is called social contract and individual rights. Begin to account the differing uh, values, opinions and beliefs of other people. They just started to respect to other beliefs by understanding that we are an individual person, so our value can be different. Okay, laws are important, but members of the society should agree upon these standards. Okay, there are one can be Muslim, one can be Christian, one can be uh, Hindus, but their laws different, their values different, and they respect the religion of each other. And in that sense, they actually understand that. So it is called the social contract and individual rights. Then our uh, another important thing that is in that stage, uh, they actually uh, sometimes they will work against rules or the interest of particular individuals, or they maintain uh, the individual rights, emphasize the social contract. And how it is, that is, if you cannot choose any rules or regulation, that you can go against it, that I don't like it, okay? It can be, it's not my opinion. Like that, the individual rights is increased in that stage. And our uh, last one, that is universal principles. In that stage, actually, uh, reasoning is based on universal ethical principle and abstract reasoning. And some are individual or some are uh, universal principles. That is, uh, again, it can be justice or it can be against the law. Or moral judgment is motivated by one's one consciousness. Uh, like that. Uh, that is what is uh, good for or what is universal truth for all. For example, in every school or every university, the rules is like that. Uh, a teacher uh, will uh, just uh, take your classes and you are bound to respect him or you are bound to uh, give pieces. And it is uh, not like for your university. Actually, any university from any uh, any university from the world, that is the same rules. That is relationship. What will be the relationship between teachers and students? What will be the rules uh, for the university? Or a fixed rule will be present in the university. That is the universal principle. And that will be followed for everyone, wherever you go. That is called the universal principle. And here, that is, uh, say like that, people have developed their own set of moral guidelines which may or may not fit the law. And uh, if you go, for example, that is like that. This stage five, as individual view is very strong now, that you can, we say that it's our own decision. We should just re respect that. That means if you take any decision, it is not right for you or it is not good, but it, as you take the decision as your own, now your individual perspective and uh, you, are, uh, you can take the decision that that uh, right of yours is present to you, then it will be your own decision and people will respect you. That is our stage five, that is called social contract and individual rights. And if go for universal uh, principle example, that is like that. If abortion become legal in our country, I will be one of the people who will be against it because it's against force law. Okay, 
That means uh, Gore's law, according to Gore's law, it is universal in the whole world that abortion is a bad thing. Okay, but in your country's law, just say that it's legal. So as universal law, you can support that, that is not a crime. Your ethics say that you have to support the universal law. That is true, that abortion is not right. So you can say, or you can take decision like that, abortion is not legal, so I will be against of that. So uh, that is actually our six stages. If for somebody it's like that, Stage one, punishment and obedience orientation. Okay, and it depends on who or he knows on the police force or it's, for example, uh, in case of stage two, it's actually uh, instrumental relative orientation or, uh, for example, you can say that if his wife uh, is nice and pretty, he should do it. Stage three is like good boy or nice girl and he should do it because he loves his wife. So stays for a uh, law and order orientation is like that saving a human life is more important than protecting property. And stays five, that is social contract orientation that uh, is uh, called like that. Uh, it's actually a case study that is given by Olberg that society has a right to ensure its own survival. I could not hold my head up in public, I later die. And that's for today. And so uh, you can note down your problems and we will discuss it in our next class. Thank you.